This is a sort of the spherical thing here. And the idea is the geometry of this is that, um, well, how can it balance? I have only a tiny little bit of mass here, but it's closer by some proportion. And the area is this thing squared, and that's the, the force law uh, for uh, gravity. So even though this is smaller than this by some uh, 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 proportion, uh, so is the distance uh, squared uh, uh, proportional. So this particular part right here exactly balances that little piece there uh, if it took everything else away. But then I, it does the same thing for every uh, point that's opposite uh, that particular point that's, that's you. Okay. So th that's a very, you know, as I say, hand-waving uh, der derivation of the uh, geometrical proportional uh, cancellation that's going on here. But what that means is that at any point, if you're inside this Earth, and I'm going to be imagining a neutron star lift that's happily dancing around inside the uh, sophomore physics Earth, at radius r, which I'll call r lesser, as compared to the... Uh, the entire object, and this is the mass that lies below that particular radius. And that's all you have to worry about. The gravitational force at that radius is just that of this little core that's below it. That's assuming uniform uh, um, uh, density, which uh, Earth is not. So when you use that argument, then you can say, okay, it's massless, r less squared, and then you just figure out what that, what that is. Uh, you put a 4 pi over 3 in numerator and denominator, now you're talking about the volume, so you can put this in terms of the density of the Earth, uh, modulo 4 pi over 3, and uh, that's the uh, equation uh, that you'll have uh, for <coughs> the force uh, inside that. In other words, the force inside that is Hooke's law. First power. Okay? And there's the actual numerical value for it. So that's what we need uh, in order to do uh, our uh, orbits inside the Earth. We're going to have this fanciful um, story about uh, a neutron starlet orbiting inside the sophomore uh, physics Earth. Now at this point, um, it's probably a good idea uh, to put uh, some of the, I'm sorry, didn't mean to hit this particular computer, but that's what I want right there. Uh, here's a couple more constants, I should say four more constants, that have approximate values that are pretty easy to remember. Uh, the Earth radius, uh, four figures accuracy, okay, that's fine, but eventually you're going to have to worry about some mountains and stuff here and there. If I just go to two figures, 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters, that that, is a, that, that rolls off your tongue a little better uh, than this. And then this 59722, well that's 6 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. That's the entire mass uh, uh, of the Earth, just to uh, a couple figures, okay? Now the Sun does pretty well as well. It's 6955. Well that's pretty close to 7, isn't it? 7 10 to the 8th compared to 6.4 times 10 to the 6th. It's a big ratio. Uh, we're tiny compared to that guy. And the mass, even more so. Uh, but it's also pretty easy. 2 times 10 to the 30th. Okay? So, for our work here, just if you... If you, and if you want to impress people at physics conferences, these are numbers that you keep in your head. Right? So you can... This is what Feynman used to do. Okay? Impress people. <laughs> so quick at, at, at figuring out things. Fermi was even better at it. He, he really uh, had all of these uh, constants uh, in a nice uh, form and uh, was able to do it. So th this is uh, what we need to uh, discuss. Now we're kind of running out of time a little bit here, so I, I'm going to go uh, pretty uh, fast with this. But I do want to point out that um, when you um, use that kite construction to, to just make lines using a, um, a rectangle. And the details that I'm not going to go into right now, but uh, th th this is a different kind of construction than we're used to. This is construction by envelopes and 
we're going to make a big fuss about that later on. But mainly for now, I'm interested in the fact that the slope opposite the focus of the parabola here, and the slope is 1, so everything is, remember I'm taking that 1, right? So I'm absolutely guaranteed a slope of 1 here, that means a focus of the parabola that describes the uh, uh, potential inside the uh, sophomore physics Earth uh, is right there. Okay, so using the kite geometry and all of that, I can very quickly uh, show uh, that this is the point right here. Uh, that is the bottom of the potential if you can move freely, like a neutron star that doesn't care, doesn't see the Earth as really any impediment at all. It's just fluff and uh, it can orbit and we're going to be studying those orbits um, and uh, making some numbers uh, for them. So, and then I'm, I'm sorry I used that wrong. It's the lattice radius. Okay, but uh, that uh, is the geometry uh, that we're interested in for inside Earth. Meanwhile, outside Earth, there are the two that we looked at uh, before. Okay, and there's the kite just to remind you uh, what's going on there. Okay, uh, the next part of this, and I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because it's stuff we can come back to later on, but I, w I just simply want to list all of the uh, essential physics that you would want to have at your fingertips if you were describing what happens to things that are orbiting outside, uh, things that are orbiting inside. Uh, you can make a, a lot of uh, headway. Um, and here is, are, are just the geometrical uh, units where the space coordinate x uh, has uh, this as 1, okay? And now we're going to make it something in MKS, namely our Earth. That's the symbol for Earth that's most used. Uh, and uh, the, the, this is uh, the surface gravity uh, at the radius of that uh, Earth, uh, squared, uh, the Coulomb uh, force law. And uh, here, uh, I'm looking at the potential energy uh, using those same, first of all, the uh, variables that have a uh, unit for our ra uh, outside radius of the Earth. And then uh, you have to put this factor uh, in there to make the uh, same equations uh, that are in MKS uh, variables. So the scaling relation is simply this. And then that gives this, and all of the uh, formulas that we're going to be putting down here have had this done to them uh, to get the uh, things. Now, escape velocity, okay? You come in on this potential, okay? Crash right there, okay? From infinity, okay? Well, not infinity, it could be Fort Smith, but that seems like infinity, this graph. Uh, uh, I'm going to come in here with a, uh, a velocity that is the escape velocity, but I'm unescaping, right? I'm coming from very far away and crashing uh, here. Time reversal is I send this thing out and it goes to infinity. So I have the kinetic energy here uh, equal to the potential, right? That's the way you find out uh, what the escape velocity is. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and do that. That's uh, Velocity escape is the square root of something. And um, th th this is, I'm going ahead on this uh, one as well. I'm going to mostly use these two screens uh, for all of this, known, all of these formulas. Okay. So, um, now inside it, th this is the uh, equations that have the inside. This is the one where you have the parabola. And basically, uh, it has to be. Uh, at one half, that's a, the, the two there, uh, the, the bottom of the parabola relative to, uh, if we were to imagine the origin was right there, uh, gives you this thing. And then uh, we have an extra minus three halves uh, uh, to there. So that's the potential energy and um, the uh, escape velocity uh, that works out for this one in MKS units is about 11 kilometers per second. It's about seven miles per second uh, in uh, English units. And then to go from the bottom of this, 
is, and this is kind of interesting, there are really three steps on these diagrams when I get them all up here. Uh, three steps uh, from living, sitting still at the center of the earth. Uh, then there's a certain amount of uh, energy it takes to climb up and be sitting right there at the, at the outside of the earth. Okay, And then the same amount of energy, let's uh, make this short here, uh, the same amount of energy to go to the next step which is to be orbiting the Earth, skimming uh, at the rate of circular orbit at the uh, uh, altitude uh, relative to the center of, of, of the Earth's uh, radius. Okay? And then to completely escape is the same unit again. So there are three steps, you might say, three steps out of hell you have to heaven. Okay? Heaven being uh, infinity with no, zero potential. I, I find that to be quite beautiful, and I don't see it in, in, in any text. Has anybody ever seen that particular uh, nomen, uh, a way to put, it, put the whole story together? Three steps, okay? Now, of course, if this was a quantum mechanical problem, these are energy levels. Okay, there's three of them to get out of the center of a uniform charge, say. Charge density. Okay? Well, <clears throat> inside and out, the surface orbit right there, that uh, particular uh, energy <clears throat> is um, obtained uh, fairly easily just by using the centrifugal uh, mass times velocity squared over the orbit radius, which is the radius of the Earth. Okay, <clears throat> That should be... Uh, that mass, mu is the mass of the particle we're actually imagining, orbiting mass mu, okay, uh, uh, doing the, the orbit. And then there's the uh, force that's holding it radially, uh, good old Coulomb, with the product of the mass of the Earth and whatever mass the satellite uh, is, the orbiter. Okay, so orbital kinetic energy equals that. That's very quick thing you get. Uh, from the centrifugal uh, force equation, and what else? Uh, subtract that, get a uh, orbital E total, which is that. And that, uh, as we say, is this energy uh, the second step here, okay? First step, second step. Well, that's the actual numerical value, MKS units. Okay, um, this gets sort of busy after a few more of these formulas. Orbital angular frequency, that's uh, of interest when we talk about this as an oscillator. Okay, this is a harmonic oscillator. Um, you punch this thing and there's a certain frequency that it's going to ring at. We get hit by a big meteorite, there's going to be that ringing going on for many months. Uh, that doesn't happen because it's going to be a big disaster. But uh, it's happened already a number of times. We've got lots of evidence of major hits on this planet. And it, it rings uh, according to the frequency uh, that we're talking about right here, you see. So all of these, these calculations of various periods, and this is the one, of course, that we'll be working with, 84 minutes uh, is a typical orbital of frequency if our satellites cruised at zero altitude, which of course you can't because there's an atmosphere here, right? So you go up to um, uh, what John Glenn had to go to to orbit the first uh, um, a time, or the Russians that came before him, um, they're making an orbit in about 90 minutes. But if we were a completely vacuum uh, place, of course we wouldn't be here, but if it was no atmosphere at all and you just got the thing going fast enough, that's fast enough to orbit skimming the trees, as it were. If you try to avoid the mountains, right? So, so it would be a little bit slower than that to avoid the mountains. Okay? Probably uh, 87 minutes would be good enough to clear everything uh, that's solid. Uh, okay. We've got surface scape feed, and we've got all that stuff is uh, already there. Now, if you crush, if you crush the Earth, okay, make it uh, more dense somehow, 
okay? Uh, say uh, you bring it uh, to this point here where you have uh, uh, got half the radius, eight times the density, one-eighth focal distance, all, all of the scale factors that apply to each of the formulas, and that's what you want to be good at, I think, in any sort of physics, but particularly in mechanics, you want to know uh, if somebody changes something by a certain factor, in this case two, uh, well, I get two times the orbit energy, I get square root of two times the orbital speed, I get two times the surface potential, I get square root of two times the surface escape speed, that's escape velocity that we talked about before, and you get four times the surface gravity. The little g gets real big uh, just by doing a half. Okay, so th those are um, you know things to, to to talk about as you crush to a half radius. So all the diagrams that we were doing that were so nice be because everything was just uh, on a, a nice a one or uh, three uh, units, half units. Uh, this this is, is obviously more complicated. So we're getting this great big, as we make this thing smaller and smaller, this thing gets getting small, more and more narrow a parabola uh, right here uh, up to the point where it shifts into the uh, Coulomb uh, uh, potential and force. Okay, now We've got enough time, I think. We're going to take a little, about five minutes extra today because I, I really wanted to get through uh, just some numbers that have to do with uh, density of kind of matter that you have in astrophysics, uh, or so we think. Um, with this Earth math of 6 times 10 to the 24th, and density, well, what uh, is that? Well, we've got the Earth radius so we can figure out the volume, okay? And uh, we're talking about here, 4 3rd pi r cubed. So let's just uh, round that one off uh, to 10 to the 21st cubic uh, meters. And we've got that many kilograms. So we're talking about a density of around 6 times 10 to the 3rd kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, that's uh, for the sophomore physics Earth, assuming it was constant density throughout, which it is not. But it isn't too far uh, from the density of liquid iron, which is very diff quite different from a, a solid iron. There we go, right? We're, we got about one figure accuracy, <laughs> right? But mm -mm, we'll take anything at this point, because boy, there's a lot going on inside the Earth we don't. I have in a sophomore physics Earth. But there you, you're seeing uh, what we're talking about for uh, the Earth is around uh, 7,000 uh, 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 kilograms uh, per cubic meter. Now, you know, per cubic meter of iron, <laughs> uh, it's a big thing, right? That's what you're, 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 you've got there. Remember, a kilogram, 2.2 pounds, so you got to multiply that 2.2 to figure out how many tons you got there, okay? Now, what I like to do is a little fingertip physics. This, I, um, We'll skim through fairly quickly here, but um, we say a nucleus of an atom, uh, atomic weight 50, radius of three femtometers. I just picked that sort of out of the, out of the air to make a middle of the periodic chart uh, example. And uh, what I'm doing here, if I've got three femtometers uh, right there, and I'm talking about packing uh, the uh, mass where each nucleon, each proton, neutron, roughly 2 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, I pack those guys in there, okay, and see, you know, um, what we've got here. And it turns out to be very close to a trillion kilograms. Uh, and this is nuclear matter, not iron, okay. A, a, a trillion kilograms in a... Um, a neutron star that's made out of nuclei. Okay? That's a lot of kilograms. Right? So that's what we're talking about. That's my neutron starlet. It's going to be, you know, that big. And with that kind of mass, it's not even going to see the Earth. If I'm some sort of Superman, I can drop that thing here. It's off orbiting. Or oscillating uh, through the Earth. Just 
the damping is practically negligible. We could talk about oscillators later on. We'll see an example uh, of that. And the Earth would be crushed by this, this factor uh, to 300 meters. There's the Razorback uh, uh, Stadium, uh, <coughs> roughly uh, um, 100 uh, kilometers, uh, just for the football field, but then there's all the stuff to hold it. The, the, the thing makes it about three times as big. So we're talking about an Earth that's the size of that. If you take the entire Earth and crush it uh, to that, uh, uh, to this degree, to the neutron star degree, uh, that's how big it is. That that's, that's kind of gives you a feeling for how crushed neutral nu nuclear matter is. The, the electrons are just out of here. <clears throat> now, um, what would you get uh, for um, the next uh, most dense thing that we know about? Okay. And uh, it's bad enough to crush to 300 meters, but how far do you have to crush poor old Earth uh, to, um, to get um, not this density, but even more than that uh, density uh, for this, which I call the black Earth, okay? So, suppose the Earth is crushed so that that escape velocity that we uh, mentioned back there around page 67 of this particular uh, lecture, okay? Um, the idea being that I would figure out what would happen if I made the thing so dense that this escape velocity becomes approaching good old speed of light. Now here's a number that is no plus or minus on it now. Uh, this is Ken Evenson's measurement of it. Uh, taken through the, the world metrologists and arguing for years and years and finally deciding that we let this number determine uh, how big a meter is. Because we can measure time so precisely we cannot measure distance anywhere near that precision. So the whole precision revolution that lets you have GPS and all that kind of wonderful stuff, uh, high resolution spectra that let me do some uh, neat things uh, with my silly theories, um, that all was uh, possible once we uh, made everybody follow this rule, that that is defining the meter. We're not going to have plus or minus on this, probably for a long time, but we're, it, eventually we will probably, uh, this thing can now be read to 18 figures, so the dam will break at some point, but we don't need to uh, break it at this point. And anyway, using this C here of just uh, uh, three uh, times 10 to the eighth uh, and, and, and demanding that that speed uh, come here, that is demanding that I get C by solving this equation uh, here uh, for uh, the radius that uh, would be. And you can see that when I do that, um, first of all, I get a bunch of numbers here, but basically I get eight ninths of 10 to the minus two, 10 to the minus two. I get a fingertip. So this is the world at your fingertips. Inside one fingertip. That's the density. Earth as big as, well that's a big finger because I blew it up there. But uh, 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 you, you, you begin to realize how incredible are these things that sit at the center of our galaxy. How incredibly they've torn space and crushed it. To, the electrons are just out of here. They just smack to nothing. Okay, well, this gives you uh, a feeling for uh, what we are up to. Now, the next thing that we will do uh, in the next lecture is talk about imagining some neutron starlet, a little fingertip, uh, doing its orbits uh, inside uh, the Earth, which is a model for a lot of things. Two-dimensional oscillators are kind of all over the place, and it's a good idea to get any feeling you can, any way of looking at them, 
is worthwhile, and we'll be doing that off and on for the rest of the course, but certainly uh, next time. Okay, any questions uh, that uh, you can think of? Um, your head questioner here has helped us today, and uh, we appreciate any questions we get. That's the way physics works, right? Somebody asks the question, particularly an embarrassing one. Right? That's what you're really looking for, embarrassing questions, because they lead to new, new results. Okay, we'll see you on Wednesday coming.